Hey, it's Kai here from Family Wheels with another car review for your growing family. And this week, it's an absolute monster in the crowded crossover world. It's the 2020 Honda CRV. It's a car that Honda claims is the highest selling crossover of the past decade. And for 2020, there's a long list of brand new features, including one huge one under the hood, which is gonna bring it more in line with its closest competitors. Let's find out about that and everything else that's brand new on the 2020 Honda CRV this week on Family Wheels. And that big addition under the hood is the introduction of a hybrid for the 2020 Honda CRV that is going to be available early 2020 in the US, not Canada. But we're used to that type of thing north of the border. It happens all the time, but it's going to happen some stage, you'd imagine, because the Ford Escape has reintroduced the hybrid after a couple of years off. The Toyota RAV4 hybrid is selling like hotcakes. Both of them have plug-in hybrids coming up soon as well. So you'd imagine it's only a matter of time until we get the hybrid version for the CRV in Canada. And that's going to be the same two-motor powertrain as the Honda Accord hybrid. But also, Honda has the plan to have two-thirds of its global sales come from electrified vehicles by 2030. That's not the only change for 2020. On the interior, it's pretty limited. We've got a newly redesigned center console, which has got much more functional storage to it. It's pretty good, it's deep. You've got this sliding shelf here. That's virtually the only thing on the inside, but the rest of it is on the outside. Let's take a look at that. Okay, so this grill has had a fresh redesign for 2020. So this through here, this used to be the chrome finish like this, but this is a black gloss, which is um, evident throughout the 2020 model. Um, these openings here, here. this has been redesigned but apart from that this whole bumper this is brand new this is a new shape but also it's much more angular and much more aggressive stance on the front these openings here these are all new you've got some LED headlamps and also on the touring trim and above you can actually get them sitting along here you can get five LED lights sitting in a row but the front end is where you're gonna see the most changes for 2020 looks more aggressive looks really nice so when Scott reviewed the 2019 model of the CRV the first of the fresh generation he didn't like the rims they were a three spoke that kind of looked like like a six spoke but clearly not a lot of other people did either because they're gone and it's freshly designed including the availability of a 19 inch rim on the touring and also on the sport trim which is this one so the rims brand new for 2020 more changes at the back here so we've got a brand new bumper just like the front sharper lines bit more aggressive bit sportier looking to match that there's also some chrome exhaust finishings uh, these lights were a bit clearer and whiter they've got a darker tint to them and you see at the bottom over there there's another big change it's the CRV sport Sport. There's been some changes to the trim level. The other small change is uh, in the US you had the second engine option which was the 2.4 litre. That's gone so it's only one engine option apart from that hybrid when it does get here which is a 1.5 litre turbocharged engine putting out 190 horsepower and 179 pound-feet of torque. By comparison, its competitors like the Mazda CX-5 and the Ford Escape both have a secondary, more powerful engine option, which can put out up to 250 horsepower using premium gas. And that would be noticeable. This car does not have a huge amount of power, but you're not buying it for fun on the highway, fun through turns at all. CRV stands for Comfortable Runabout Vehicle, and that's exactly what this is. But its other competitors like the RAV4, the CX-5, the Escape, all do not have a CVT. And CVT can be a dirty word. Some people, if you don't know what it is, you don't care. If you know what it is, 90% of people can't stand it. Okay, so Canada now has six trim levels. It still starts with the LX front wheel drive. After that, all wheel drive is standard. Um, now this one, this is the third trim level, which was the EX, but is now called Sport. It's purely aesthetic. It does nothing for performance or engine or anything like that. It's just a little bit on the inside and the exterior. Then you've got EXL, which is still the same. Touring, which was still the same. And then there's a brand new one at the very top called the Black Edition. Now it's pretty much exactly like the Touring, except you've got a couple of details. Another change for 2020 is awesome, which with the driver assist packages called Honda Sensing, that is all available from standard now. So you've got collision mitigation braking system with forward collision warning and pedestrian sensing capability. You've got your road departure mitigation with lane departure warning, adaptive cruise control. So those are really cool. Another thing which has changed for 2020, on touring, you get wireless charging. It's gonna sit just down here below your gear shift. In the US, you still have the choice of front wheel drive or all wheel drive from the base level all the way up to touring. The US doesn't get the black edition. 
but there's only that one engine selection until the hybrid gets here. But the all-wheel drive is about another 1500 bucks, which I would definitely go for. Fuel economy is really, really good. So you're getting 8.1 liters per 100 kilometers in Canada, which is about 29 miles per gallon. So fuel economy on the CRV is still exceptional. You're also getting heated front seats as standard. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto is standard, remote start. And another feature which I love, which is called Lane Watch. So there's a button just on the end of your, your lights um, over here, which is called Lane Watch. So when it's not on your left-hand side, but when you hit uh, turn right where you'd have usually a big blind spot back there um, when you turn that on it will use a camera to show you if there's anyone in your blind spot right here on your infotainment system really nice feature the only downside on it which I didn't like which is when you've got your navigation up and you're watching it trying to work out if you're trying to take the right turn so you think you're taking the right turn on your navigation and you hit your indicator and then your navigation disappears because that camera comes up you can turn it off quickly just by hitting the button at your the end of your tactile button for your lights here and just on that infotainment system it's another thing that works really well for the Honda CRV it's not revolutionary but the graphics are similar to what was in some of the Acura models like the the MDX and the ILX which we reviewed just not long ago a little bit better than that it's slow to respond sometimes but certainly the touch part of it is very accurate it's nicely positioned that's just one thing about the Honda CRV it just does everything really well sometimes when you get into a car I think to myself I don't like where that is I don't like that but everything just works and is very functional and very practical in this CRV. Nothing blows you away, but it's just a solid car and a very functional and practical car for families. Plenty of space in the back. So if we check out our standardized tests, the rear facing kid seat with the chunkiest kid seat ever, the Collect Flow, works perfectly. Plenty of space for the passenger in front. And um, the anchor points for the kid seat were a little bit hard to find. Rather than being totally exposed, you have to go searching for them just a little bit, but nothing desired. And the other thing, which is something that they advertise a lot, near 90 degree opening on the rear doors. It's about 85 degrees, which makes getting kids in and out super, super easy. And also the door frames are quite high and wide, so it's not a problem whatsoever. It's a great car for families in that respect. And that continues in the back with our trunk test oodles of room back there. Nearly 1,100 litres of cargo space in this CRV, which is about 39 cubic feet. So our standardised test of a stroller, camera bag, diaper bag, two bags of groceries and a soccer ball passes with flying colours. And that trunk space actually leads its other competitors as well. The smallest one, which I've mentioned, the CX-5 had the smallest amount, but it's slightly more than both the Ford Escape and the Toyota RAV4. Ride height is really nice in the CRV as well. I feel a little bit elevated compared to some others like the CX-5. Cabin noise is pretty good in the CRV as well. Not the quietest I've ever heard, but it's certainly pretty good. You do hear some engine noise though. So its closest competitors I've mentioned do not have the CVT, like your Mazda CX-5, the RAV4, and the Ford Escape. So let's have a listen to this one. And that sound is why a lot of people don't like CVTs. I prefer it didn't have one, but the CRV just does everything so nicely and so well. It's not a car that is asking you to make it perform and so having the CVT sort of doesn't matter as much because you're not going to be driving this aggressively. Of all the cars that I get to drive here for the channel, um, my wife found this to be one of the best. Others she liked was the Volkswagen Tiguan but in terms of being a functional and practical car for a family, this one just ticks so many boxes. Okay, what don't I particularly like about the CRV? There's a couple of things, apart from the CVT, which sounds awful, but the car doesn't really ask you to make it perform anyway. The dash kind of looks a bit dated. It looks like a, I don't know, early, late 90s computer game trying to look like a spaceship. I don't love it. The buttons on the steering wheel, while they're functional and they all work perfectly fine, they just, it's kind of clear finish on it and it looks a little bit cheap. It does have some driving mode, so it has low, sport, I don't, you're not really gonna get much out of it, and drive, but you don't have a button for sport, so you kinda have to clunkily go through. You can't go back, you gotta hit the button to go back, and then slide up into drive, which sometimes then you can also slide if you hit it too vigorously into neutral. So it'd be good to have just a button for sport. You do have the button for one other driving mode, which is economy. Um, geez, that might, let's, this is full bore and economy. Ah, God, that sounds disgraceful. 
Let's try that in sport. I feel no difference. But yeah, that's kind of odd. It's very clunky, you could use a button to do that. But this whole area is really nice. Everything is just where you need it to be. The gear shift is you can keep your hand on the console here and just change as you like. Infotainment system is really nice and close. Tactile buttons for climate control functions really well. Climate control also comes up on the screen. You just hit this climate button just here and everything pop pops up. The climate touch screen things are really slow to react, um, but it's not the end of the world. It all functions really nicely. Let's take a look at the rest of the interior here though. We do have a bunch of USB outlets, which is really nice. We've mentioned the newly designed center console, which has had much more function to it. You've got another power outlet in there. Plenty of storage in the door trimming as well. The sound system is okay. This one's only the Sport, which is not near the top. I'd imagine the Touring and the Black Edition has a better sound system than this. I feel like for the price point, the finishings, while it's like, you know, this is fake, I think. <laughs> but at least it makes like the cheaper materials it's sort of made to look a little bit nicer sometimes other like the Nissan Ultima we're in just recently wasn't really trying when it looked at those finishes but everything just even for a lower trim level this one the Sport everything actually looks quite nice these seats are just a fabric which if you do have kids on the Sport that while they look kind of sporty and they look nice the leather against this cloth finishing I'd imagine if you do get some stuff in that um, thicker stitching there it might be tougher to get it out if you're trying to get it cleaned you know goldfish crackers and things worn into it but apart from that interior comfortable functional practical it all works the Honda CRV also gets a top safety pick from the IHHS and the NHTSA gives it a five-star rating so that's the 2020 Honda CRV. Not the most attractive car in the world, not the most exciting car in the world, but it continues to do everything it's meant to really, really well. If you found this review useful, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to the channel so you can catch all our reviews as soon as they come out every single week. Until next time, from Family Wheels, I'm Kai.